The centralization of power was something that kind of struck you about this documentary too, right? Yeah. Well, the how much power is actually vested in a single individual. And there's always there's always the, you know the rebuttal to that which is no 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 but it's the entire team it's the entire um, uh, group behind it but this is the thing is there's decisions that need to be made at the very 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 top and those are typically the decisions with the greatest impacts or consequences um, such as hitting the uh, nuclear bomb and you know for example they talk about Johnson a lot in the um, President Johnson a lot in the documentary and um, I don't know a great deal about Johnson again but it sounds like he was someone that um, did did from time to time disregard advice completely um, and I think they also mentioned that for example Kennedy uh, needed to introduce some legislation so that to enable them to um, engage properly in the Viet- Vietnam War and so he kind of pushed that through um, with his presidential powers or whatever uh, he had uh, to allow him to do that. So uh, as much as we say that there's, you know, these teams operating below and there's advice that is given, to some degree there's still there's still a, a single point, um, particularly for those really, really high impact situations and it's, Mm. at the end of the day they're just human yeah it's such a fascinating way to frame up just your you know even you just think about yourself trying to make a decision with that much impact that much potential collateral i just it almost gives you paralysis yeah just thinking about it yeah and i think his overarching message is you you just can't know so should someone be actually making this call you know, um, and one of his eleven, because it, it says eleven lessons from Robert McNamara is the tagline, and I don't think they're really lessons; they're they're more like chapters in the documentary. Um, but one of them is empathize with the enemy. You know, so try and understand them and get inside their heads and f- figure out their motivations. Is kind of what he means by that. I. But it was interesting to see him talk about, um, say, the death of Kennedy. And he was talking about how he picked out the grave location with Jackie on Anassas where Kennedy would be buried and he was crying in the documentary. (laughs) But he was talking about the bombing of fire bombing of Tokyo in in more of an academic sense you know he still cared and was emotional about it but he wasn't crying uh, and that's a hundred thousand people and this kind of goes to his 11th lesson as well, well. that was that was a hundred thousand people in one day well yeah yeah um, and it goes to his 11th lesson which is you can't you know, paraphrasing, you can't change human nature. And, yeah, human nature is to care about those that you're personally connected to. And so he had a much stronger relationship with President Kennedy than those um, Japanese people. And so, yeah, and then if you take that then to the point where, okay, well, now we've got the nuclear codes in one person's hand, or two people or three people and it's just a button and, you know, then you go back to bed and something happens on the other side of the world. Very, very, not a lot of skin in the game there. There's a real segregation of of the minds or something that must go on because that was a huge juxtaposition in the in the documentary because he, he basically, yeah, just finished talking about wiping out just an unimaginable number of people like you can't even imagine that many people in a in a in a single place you know um 
uh, then to immediately brutal death skip too s- burn to oh. death. You know. I, I, I've, I've seen other documentaries in the past, mate, around that particular situation, and um, the the fire was just so hot that people were just like some, you know, right in the heat of it, were just instantly vaporized. Um, and then you get, you know, and then you get further and further away from that instantly vaporized, and the death just gets more and more terrible. Um, you know, until you get to the point of all the people suffering in hospitals and things afterwards with, you know, the third and second degree burns forever. It's just um, the amount of suffering is in, insane. And this happened <laughs> not once. This happened time and time and time again. And, it, yeah, he was optimising it. Maximise efficiency is another one of his lessons. So- yeah, I think I think the, um, the, the important thing to note there is he was focused on the efficiency and effectiveness, but I think it was actually one of the um, one of the generals, and I can't recall his name, but he was like known as Mister Destruction, you know, the general of uh, destruction. Basically, Lemay, his name was. Lemay was it? Yeah, and and Curtis, he's he's I think it's like Curtis Lemay. Yeah, I'll, I'll he's look like up. his his number one self assigned KPI was square meters of destruction per crew members lost or something like that. Um, for his for his air force which is just absolutely crazy